Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell, keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Of majority of the challenges that believers have listen please the root cause of jealousy the root cause of envy listen carefully the root cause of lust and addictions the root cause of sin the root cause of um, selfishness the root cause of covetousness you see all of these attributes listen let me teach you something you see spiritual things we know it by now are more grave and more serious whether good or bad than physical things are we together now did you know that um god forbid but come if it's an example please if i get this lady pregnant what did I say is an example listen are we together now I'm very serious tonight laugh now because I'm sure that you will not need to laugh again as we continue if I get this lady pregnant for instance listen it will look more regrettable because there is something obvious her stomach will protrude are we together but if I lost after this lady now, she doesn't get pregnant by me lusting after her. So, I will think I am free. Are, are, we, are we together now? If I slap this lady and there are marks of my hands on her face, you call it wickedness and you say, this guy is wicked because there is a physical expression. But if I hold bitterness and jealousy, bitter anger and rage, sorry my dear, against her it's easy for you to think i'm a spiritual man are we together now let me tell you something i have discovered bless you darling you can pick up your it is it is easier it is easier listen in fact in my opinion i know that sin is sin but in my opinion what the bible calls the sin of the spirit have you read that there is the sin of the flesh that can have physical evidences they can have regrettable consequences immediately you are punished for it you receive embarrassment for it and it's over but what the bible calls the sin of the spirit that may not find any physical expression is more deadly listen is more dangerous it has the highest ability to choke your spiritual progress are we together now and for many believers when you begin to walk in the kingdom because you are focusing on other things like the anointing you know faith trying to understand redemption understanding the Pauline epistles understanding a lot of things you know the miraculous visions prophecies the gifts of the spirit because of your focus on these charismatic dimensions of truths or the principles of the kingdom very little attention is paid to these very deep spiritual things in fact usually we interpret them to be basic we just feel i mean, I mean that that's that, let's let's talk of grave things like power miracles etc etc 
but as you rise in God you will discover that the text of your dealing with God will no longer be physical things are we together when God begins to deal with you at a mature dimension you will find out that his concentration will be the motivation behind everything he's not as interested um, in the physical expression of it as it is the root cause the motivation behind everything that you do if you're following me say amen and so i found out that the root cause of all of these things not most of them all of them is in one word one simple word is called self-centeredness we call it self but the word is self-centeredness not selfishness self-centeredness everybody say it self-centeredness this is the root cause of sin any kind this is the root cause of any expression of the flesh in fact it is the doorway to the flesh finding expression when you are studying the spirit man and the man of the flesh it's impossible for you to study the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh without understanding the foundation listen the bible says the axe is laid at the root of the tree so when jesus is dealing with a matter he does he forgets about the expressions and goes to the root of the tree and attempts to hit it right there because when the root is destroyed then all the leaves will dry off naturally are we together now self-centeredness our human nature has been so designed that the motivation listen subconsciously behind every activity we do on earth is to find a way of gratifying our desires be it pleasures be it a sense of ambition whatever it is and that is not wrong in itself except for the fact that in god's economy listen please if at any point you are found pursuing anything that does not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom and the enthronement of christ experientially that entire activity is useless are we together now listen i have discovered as i study the bible and i've read my bible a number of times every story captured in scripture was only captured because of the appearance of that story with respect to jesus and his purposes many things happened during different dispensations but certain stories were omitted because they did not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom are we together so every story that found its way to the bible only found its way because of the alignment of that story to the purposes of the kingdom that means in god's economy please listen the degree to which you are featured at any given dispensation is the degree to which your life and everything about your life can contribute to enthroning christ are we together now so if the let's say the history of the church in zaria is to be written from 2014 to 2016 if the holy ghost were to inspire men to write you will find out that many important things that happen in zaria will not be recorded there are we together god will only focus on the activities that were centered around his kingdom when you study i mean people who have read archaeology and history and all of that you will know that concurrently at the point certain things were being recorded in scripture certain historical things were happening at that same time but the bible did not see the need to include them because they had no contribution in the understanding of christ and his purposes are we together now so if god is going to write a little story about your life you will think he will write when you went to the market you will think he will write when you went to abu anything that cannot relate to his purposes in your life will not be captured are you getting what i'm saying now 
these brothers and sisters is the foundation of our work with God and this state I just explained to you is the greatest enemy of the flesh the flesh thrives upon ownership the flesh thrives upon um, personal ambition listen listen you have to understand this if you want to be spiritual so the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2 when you read from verse 16 he says love not the world this is John the Apostle now teaching us he says love not the world neither the things listen that are in the world he didn't say don't have them 15 it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world right it says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then he breaks down these things into three categories for all that is in the world 16 the lust of the flesh category one the the challenges that you experience by reason of having a material body the limitations that you are bound to experience because you possess a body number two he says the loss of the eyes then number three the pride of life he says is not of the father but is of the world so john the beloved having been mentored directly by jesus christ and understood the 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 very essence of the kingdom life is teaching us in his epistle and he's saying look if you want to be spiritual people you must come to a point where this self must be destroyed trying to trying to do physical things to address jealousy address sin address this all those things will only lead to legalism and religion the core motivation behind every one of these things believe me brothers and sisters is self-centeredness self-centeredness the need to see yourself exalted that's why we fight if you don't call me apostle i fight you why because self self wants to be glorified that's why we want titles are we together now seeing then that we are in this world but not of the world there must be a mechanism for us to be able to effectively take advantage of all the tools that have been prepared before us without being contaminated by their effects in our spirit tools such as prosperity tools such as influence are we together now tools such as the anointing all of these are tools but then there must be a foundational build up so that while we engage constantly in this earth using these tools we shield ourselves from the effect that using these things outside of this understanding creates on people so there is something money will do to you if your motivation is wrong are we together now that is dangerous there is something anointing will do to you when your motivation is wrong being prosperous with a self-centered understanding is the recipe for destruction being anointed with a self-centered mentality is a recipe for destruction are we together self let me show you something apostle james was teaching us something and he um when i when i when i saw it uh, for me it, it it touched me um where's that that's that's that? not not um not james help me holy spirit second timothy please give us second timothy that should be timothy right second timothy three second timothy three i think i'm right second timothy three please give it to us from verse one to four it says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come verse 2 for men shall be what lovers of their are you seeing this now men shall be lovers of their own selves and as a result many other things will follow 
because they are lovers of their own self they will be covetous they will be boasters they will be proud do you understand the context of that scripture now the foundation is lovers of themselves lovers of themselves is not a point it is the reason why these other things will happen because men shall be lovers of them own, their own self that love for themselves will make them covetous so when they see somebody else's thing they say ah this person does not deserve it it should be mine it should be me are we together then it says boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful ingratitude god you tried but you can do more unholy uh-huh without natural affection truth breakers false accusers look at them incontinent fierce rageful why are you touching my reputation do you not know i am apostle joshua selman lovers of themselves so that aggression is not a family thing this is what is leading to it why you are angry with everybody despisers of those that are good can you imagine that a man can love himself to a point that he despises good people verse 4 traitors heady high minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of now the key word there is more than the key word is not pleasure the key word is not god the key word is more than more than it's like a meter your love for pleasure gets to a point where it moves beyond its jurisdiction and overrides to a point where your love for god is subject to your love for things your love for cars your love for houses your love for all of this self-centeredness the need the craving to be on the scene the need the craving to be the epicenter of everything the need for recognition the need for honor the need to occupy the position of god listen this is what happened to lucifer i will ascend to the stars i will be like the most high that was the manifesto of lucifer and while he said that for the first time god would find somebody in heaven who was not aligned to his purposes it was no longer about the program of god it was lucifer i will be i'm not interested whether i'm sent on errand i want to be like the most high and he was charged with treason and the bible says there was war in heaven and lucifer was judged and was casted down this attitude is best described in the story of the prodigal son listen let me tell you how you know you are self-centered the language of self-centeredness is me myself when when you no longer care the consequences of your pleasure on others and on the kingdom regardless of who suffers it let me get what i want is self-centeredness god is helping someone tonight you are not happy because i'm talking about you and me self-centeredness believe me is the root of sin self-centeredness is the root of these attributes of the flesh that so destroy us they are the weights the bible says we should lay aside but you don't say i will stop jealousy uh -uh. they are effects the cause for that is a life of self-centeredness brothers and sisters look at me is the reason why some of you here looking at me even if you have to kill to make money you will do it why not because you are not a christian something in you listen let me tell you what self-centeredness does it creates an imaginary pressure and mounts that pressure on you 
and you keep pushing yourself to do say and be things that are unnecessary because you believe that your sense of worth is tied to those things that's why we do very stupid things self-centeredness is why pastors fight themselves is why business people fight themselves is why a husband and a wife cannot live in peace because they are self-centered everybody brings his idea it has to be my way that's another language of self-centeredness my way it must be my way listen the moment you find yourself whether saying or being driven by these motivations i want to glorify myself my pleasure it must be my way then you know that self-centeredness is eating you up there are people here who think it's just a temperament issue they say it's just my personality type that that is complete nonsense don't let the devil fool you that is that is self-centeredness the core the very control button of evil in your life are we together there are people here you've been trained to have things happen your way if it is not your way to hell with it that motivation has driven us into all sorts of things when when um we were being taught evangelism in the seminary this is what happened how many of you have heard of something called four spiritual laws one green pamphlet right that's a very good book because from the first page they will show a man's heart in an arrow and then they show a chair inside then they show you sitting there that's exactly that's the clearest description of self-centeredness the god of your own self now let me tell you something the devil is smart he angles self-centeredness so it does not exactly look like you are taking the place of god do you understand it's very subtle so you think i love god i pray when i sin i run to god that's the point you are not running to god because you love him you are running to god because of fear that you think that sin has opened a door for something to happen to you is still you i want to go to heaven is still you it looks spiritual but it's still you are you seeing you are still self-centered that is spiritual and you are mentioning heaven does not mean that it's of god when it is about you are we together so i'm trying to walk in holiness so that um, i mean i won't do this if this lady waves me i don't even want to look at her face because by doing that god will see me it's still self-centeredness it's just a more religious form of it it's still self-centeredness are we together i'm preparing a nice message and i'm praying in tongues fasting three days dry but the reason is so that everybody who comes for koinonia will know that there is a man of god a, a spiritual form of self the moment it is for you for your glory for your reputation let me tell you i can tell you how self-centered we are because of how much we we fight to make things work in our life you see the way you take the issue of your success too personal as if your name is on the line itself it says for i've been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me are we together watch this if this comes sam if this is sam's handkerchief now i love sam with all my heart if this is sam's handkerchief and it falls now i love him and i love the handkerchief but i do not think i will be so distracted to run and come and pick this handkerchief are we together if the falling of the handkerchief becomes so personal that my reputation is tied to it is it really sam's handkerchief it's mine i'm trying to claim it that's what we do with our lives the level to which we are forcing ourselves to make it 
and force ourselves to walk the way we take the issue of our personal success so personal as if our world will crumble the way we guard our name with such fragility is a sign that we are self-centered that level of investment cannot just be for God we are doing it for ourselves thank you okay thank you, sir. are we together When people become overconscious of their reputation, it's self-centeredness. It's self-centeredness. When God began to reveal these things to me, I was amazed. And I said, my God, that means who is free? Who truly is free? I looked at my own life and I said, my God, imagine how many times I've been caught up with these things. Well-meaning, sincere, very sincere you see the key to walking with god is to tremble at his word and be open when you stand before god and foolishly excuse yourself it is still self-centeredness so when the word of god is coming many of us just tap ourselves and like wow i hope they are hearing are you joking this is a message for everybody it's a message you should sit down and have a sober reflection upon look at your life and see the motivation behind the things you are doing and you will see the uncomfortable truth that you have to admit tonight that you have been self-centered absolutely self-centered i know you say it is for him but the truth it is is that you only say it as a cliche but in reality it is for you self-centeredness There's so many things that have happened in the body of Christ that look spiritual and looks as if we are doing it for God. When the scribes and the Pharisees caught the woman in adultery, listen, they were scholars. They were dragging her to Jesus. You would think they were so passionate about Moses and keeping the law. They were looking for a way to destroy the ministry of Jesus. So they did not care who was the scapegoat that being used, that was being used. Let me tell you something about self self-centeredness. Self-centeredness is an expression of wickedness because in an attempt to get your desire, you do not care who suffers and you do not care what goes wrong in the life of anybody. It's the hallmark of self-centeredness. When my desire becomes a passion that whatever suffers in the process whether god or man is none of my business that's why people kill to get political positions they don't mind they go to a herbalist and he says bring five children and they go and steal the hard end ch children of five families slaughter them while they are slaughtering these children they don't care all they are seeing is the office the apex i tell you that's where it comes from self-centeredness when a man leaves his wife and goes to carry another prostitute and travel is self-centeredness is not just pleasure is self-centeredness are we together when somebody bribes in the office and corners billions of naira into his pocket and returns back rejoicing calling himself a rich man it is not just money it is self-centeredness because that somebody's salary in his pocket he does not care that somebody has a wife and children he does not care all he's concerned about is let me get this is it not how we all are how many times have we not paid attention to the effect of our pursuit on the advancement of the kingdom and the well-being of the people oh let me talk to you and I, I say this please don't take this personal but i want to talk to you and 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 do you know do you know sincerely speaking the worst the, the worst victims of this are ladies sisters say amen that's right because of your emotional nature and your cravings to have your desires met i've seen ladies who don't care what goes wrong 
provided they get it if you tell a lie to get the withhold money no problem let me just wear it if i must corner somebody to buy the iphone 6 iphone 7 whichever one no problem we are more concerned about the arrival of our desires regardless of what suffered for it to arrive that's the apex of self-centeredness have you not seen visitors who come to your house they come to beg rice and you tell them honestly i just have one mudu and you would think they will be sympathetic and say oh i know if it's one mudu it's okay they also say hey, but we, i can still have it you see people like that and at a point you just say okay no problem let me just give you and you give them and they collect they say thank you and they are going we are like that we are laughing but that's how we are so says the word of god we are spiritual but he's helping us to rise that's what will make someone come and see someone's food the last meal and just eat it and pour water in the plate and keep it you were hungry but you never believe that someone else may have a desire and as far as your do you know let me tell you something brothers and sisters i have worked among people leadership has opened me up to people there are people whose hearts are bad not because they are bad people themselves the 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 the, the appetite to getting their lost satisfied is very terrible anything that will make it happen let it happen if God will suffer to hell with him. Are we together? Yeah. So when a pastor sits down and tells people, all of you bring five, five hundred thousand and does not care that this person is a student and is not even earning up to five thousand and says, look, you better use your faith. Bring your 500,000. It looks spiritual. And people claim it's for God. It's not for God. When it is for God, you follow God's way. God has a system. Are we together? Yeah. Someone was talking to me, um, I think some weeks ago, and he was just talking about churches and all of that. And then he told me a few things. He was just mentioning different churches. And I looked at him. I said, I want to ask you a question. I said why are you talking about these things and he said no 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 it's not like I have any problem I say you do are you kidding me you do because the God you claim to be serving who you are defending so personally is quiet so I wonder why you who is supposed to be his representative is so personal about the issue yes I know the lady wore trouser but why have you taken it so personal it's like a mission you gave yourself are you really sure you are doing that for God okay the lady covered her hair and does not wear trousers what is your own business we do a lot of things that look spiritual but brothers and sisters the foundation of it is self self the need for self so we fight jealousy ladies brothers jealousy Whenever you see someone with something nice, something in you reacts. Jealousy, self-centeredness. It would have been me. Why should this lady be having this? When did she, I mean, can you imagine? This guy wanting to marry her. Ah, come on, something is wrong. There is a story we must tell the brother. Self-centeredness. How about preachers? We love crowds like this. We claim it's for the glory of God. But underlying it is our desires. That's why pastors put pressure on members. They come up with every kind of business schemes to force ministry to work. When you see the way they are putting pressure, this cannot be of God. It's too personal. Why don't you let God take charge of his own kingdom? Koinonia is quiet this night. Myself for me so we go to pray lord i trust you for a car and let me tell you something <laughs> my god you can spiritualize do you know i love the word because jesus is the word 
and the Bible says the word can discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart father give me a car for your glory and then he says since it's for my glory work with my own timing and he said no Lord give me a car now for your glory and God is saying no, it's for my glory let me control the timing I say Lord you I force you by sowing a seed give me a car now it's for your glory and God said just remove the for your glory and say give me a car now before I know what to do with you <laughs> we think we think because we are saying for your glory it is spiritual listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters the unrestfulness in our approach to life is a sign that we don't want to fail because our ego is so tied to the failure are you getting that five o'clock people wake up in every city while they are praying jesus i thank you this is a beautiful day what they are saying in the spirit is scapegoat how are you I'm, I'm awake today i hope i can use you today to please achieve my goals amen that's what they thought they did that's what they call devotion to ease the guilt and then they begin their work they do everything that they do and then they come back and say god i don't know why you are not doing this you have to do this and then you will take the glory we 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 cap our self-centeredness with that statement be glorified be glorified is not just a statement be glorified is a state where you no longer are embarrassed about the outcomes of your life the the reason why you are responsible over them is not the fear of failure again it's not the embarrassment you have you have you have you have died you have died to your ambitions it's about him if koinonia does not work it's no longer about joshua selman's ego to say I would, maybe this guy is backsliding are you seeing so the fear of being taught to be backsliding will now drive me to go and fast and pray and buy messages i will think i am growing spiritually but it's self-centeredness that's why some of you came for koinonia this night i know you love god but the truth about it is that that's not the reason let me tell you how you know we are self-centered whenever we do not get our desires our responses become ugly five minutes before your desire you were trusting that the woman will not die lord i know you i take you by your word for your glory lord in the name of jesus i am your servant and then the person the person dies and all of a sudden your ego is on the line no 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 no. let's raise this person back to life and you try and try and nothing happens and your ego is on the line i watch it happen to people you prophesy to somebody in the name of jesus you are going to get a job and you see the pressure on you men of god prophesy like that and they go back and say oh god please let this word come to pass it looks spiritual it is your word so you are in such a passion to bring it to pass so that they can say apostle prophesied and like he said it came to pass is god helping us this night are you learning something self-centeredness brothers and sisters are you seeing the damage it has caused to us sister are you seeing that this is why if you are not careful you may not marry the will of god because although in your prayer you are saying lord is only your will all that is talk in reality you have already painted the picture of the man the necessary and sufficient condition to say yes to any man you have painted it it's unbending no amount of preaching no matter how pathetic will move your mind the hardness of your heart has been glued to that image must be a millionaire then you now add and say and spiritual too just to make you feel so it no longer is about the will of god same thing for people getting jobs listen listen let me tell you don't laugh about this it's a very serious thing do you know why jesus pleased the father it was not because of his miracles it was because he was a walking expression of a body that has been dedicated 
for the will of God to find expression or restraint. Here are the things that Jesus said himself. Let's look at a few scriptures. Jesus himself said this. John 17 verse 1, please. Give it to us media. Let's hurry up. I want us to pray. John 17 verse 1. John 17 verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. Father, the hour is come. Glorify now thy son. Many of us will stop there. And then the next thing we'll add is amen. Glorify now Joshua Selman. Give him money. Give him faith. Give him increase. But Jesus put a comma there and said that thy son may also glorify you. In other words, Lord, it's not necessary to have to use me to prove a point. But simply because I am passionate about seeing your glory revealed, use me as the vehicle for that revelation. Ah. There are things I know that can touch the heart of God. Are we together? There are things I know by my experience with God that touches the heart of God. More than faith, believe me, more than acting out spiritual things is a heart that is completely surrendered to glorify God. Jesus, look at Jesus. Who do being equal with God? Equal with God. I know what Jesus would have prayed at this point. Father, remember that our glory. Make sure you never forget it. I'm only here for three and a half years. I'm coming back. Make no mistakes. No new election in heaven. I am here. My position that I came to become a scapegoat doesn't mean you should take me for granted. I'm calling on you. You better answer me. Jesus submitted himself and said, glorify me so that you will be glorified. Brothers and sisters, this is the language of a life where Christ sits upon the throne of that personality. Do you know this is what Jesus came to give us? There's been a confusion in the body of Christ about Old Testament and New Testament. Let me tell you, if you meet Jesus today, he will never talk to you about Old Testament or New Testament. Whether you are under grace or law is nonsense. He's going to ask you one question. Who is seated at the throne of your heart? Jesus came to deliver us. The very gospel was designed to take us away from a life of self-centeredness. Not from a life of works. No. From a life of self-centeredness. The motivation behind our activities. Being us to a life that is glued to glorifying Christ. Brothers and sisters, I don't care whether you are in the Old Testament or New. You are not born again if Christ is not seated at the throne of your heart. I don't care how many times you have recited salvation prayer. The essence of the coming of Jesus is not just to bring a new order. The essence of the coming of Jesus is to align men back to the purposes of the kingdom where Christ himself will be seated. The Lord gave me a revelation this morning. Both the elder brother of the prodigal son and the younger brother committed the same sin. The only difference was one executed it openly, whereas the other one kept it, which is an example of the two kinds of believers we have. Both of them were tired of the leadership of their father. One had the courage to express it. One kept it. They wanted ownership. And here's what the first one said. The first one said, give me. That self-centeredness there. Give me. I know you gave me access, but I don't want access. Because the access is in your name. I now want it in my name. Give it to me. The younger, the elder brother did not say give it to me. But it was in his heart. Listen. I'll prove it to you. When the prodigal son returned back. And they were celebrating him. What happened to the elder brother? He became angry. And this is what he said. Father, I have served you all these years. You have not even given me a small, um, you know, a small animal cattle to slaughter for me and my friends. You see the offense? The self-centeredness was still there. In other words, Lord, I have served you. Will you not reward me? See, 
this is the imbalance of the doctrine of covenant that I always balance I've been insulted many times because of this I tell believers in terms of our personal work we are not in a covenant with God it's a relationship it is only when you talk about kingdom advancement and now bring in the operation of the principles of the kingdom then you bring covenant are we together because you see Jesus gave a parable to explain that in the morning he saw some people idle and he called them to go and walk in the farm is that true he negotiated money with them that's covenant terms you walk I give you a denary later in the afternoon he saw some people idle and he said why sitters that idle he said no my employers he said go based on relationship they went because they loved him and they believed him there was no arrangement that he was going to pay them even till the 11th hour one hour to close time he still saw somebody he said go now when he started rewarding them see how he rewarded them he started with the covenant people since my agreement with you was one denary take and then he called those who went because they loved him and said since you were in this farm to promote my interest i will now decide what to give you and a person who worked for one hour received the same reward with somebody who started in the morning and the guys were angry they said no something is wrong and he said what you negotiated with me the same way you are saying lord i will serve you in ushering department my husband must come before koinonia ends thank you for that that's a covenant you will get the husband but what if god wanted to give you a husband plus an anointing and a destiny those two you robbed yourself because the motivation listen i know there are times we can tie things to god but brothers and sisters let me tell you the higher you rise with god it no longer matters whether you get results or not it now becomes his glory for your glory i will do anything to behold you as my king One more time. For your glory, I will do anything just to see. To be hold you as my king. I want to be with John 4 34 Jesus said this John chapter 4 verse 34 Jesus said my meat is not to build a ministry he didn't say my meat is to prove that I am Savior look at this do you know that every time they challenge Jesus about his his messianic persona did you see the way he was not under pressure to defend himself I know what I would have done, Joshua Selman. Ah, I'll tell media, make a montage and prove to these people, gather all the miracles that have happened and tell them, are you stupid? Is that not the power of God? But, I mean, they met Jesus. The woman was caught in adultery. Jesus would have said, but you guys are foolish. Don't you know that I can do word of knowledge? In fact, the name of the husband, the name of the man that slept with her is Rabbi Benjamin. Where is he come out? And people will clap and say, my God. Hi, Rabbi, you are the one. But Jesus did not see a need for that. He was more concerned about that woman. But he answered them in a dangerous way. Instead of saying, I am the only one qualified to cast stones. He said, he who has no sin, cast the first stone. In other words, whoever among you fits that definition, cast the first stone. All of them left, and she was left with the only person who was to cast the stone. He said, since I am qualified, I choose to let you go. Go and see no more. That's Jesus for you. That's the Jesus we try to preach about that we don't understand. We shout and spit on people trying to preach him. Yet we don't pay attention to understand him. 
are we together the essence of Christianity brothers and sisters is not legalism and religion the essence of Christianity is not even evangelism the essence of Christianity is not heaven the essence of Christianity is not prosperity and money the essence of Christianity is not ministry and healing the essence of Christianity is a life through the ministry of the Holy Spirit replaced from a life of self-centeredness to a life that is absolutely committed to seeing Christ enthroned first in your life and throughout every territory regardless of what your own achievement is while you do that is nonsense it's only secondary listen when you get this thing I'm telling you you will see the power of God in your life I can tell you this is why many people are not anointed I've said it the key to the anointing is not just fasting and prayer I've seen people fast for hundreds of days. You fast with yourself at the center of your heart. You have only succeeded in doing a good weight loss program. I assure you, you are not going to touch the anointing. A heart that is dedicated to seeing his glory come. Okay, Lord. This is the lady I want to marry. Oh, I like her. But thy will. Everybody say thy will. Be done. Say thy will. This is the language of a Christ-centered life. Lord, I want to go to London. It's always been my desire. However, I realize that my life is not my own. The Bible says I've been bought with a price. You don't act as if Jesus didn't finish paying for you. He paid for you completely. In fact, whether you are born again or not, you are still his property. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness therein. Right? So, whether through sovereign ownership or through the manifestation of the love of his son, you still belong to him. Listen to what Jesus said. My meat, this is what moves my life, my nourishment, my satisfaction is to do the will of who him that sent me and to finish it i am more concerned about doing the will than enjoying any blessing that comes while doing the will so if in the course of doing the will of god i operate certain principles and i enjoy blessings while i'm wearing the nice suit while i'm driving the nice car my gaze is set on seeing him glorified so prosperity no longer has the power to distract me because i met it on my way to pleasing god whether or not i met it i am determined to still finish pleasing him so paul says what then shall separate us from the love of god look at this the apostle who brought himself back to life they killed paul immediately they went he came back to life and shook himself my god a man who wrote two third of the gospel this is what he said for for me to live is christ i don't know for you but for me to live is christ then even if i die listen paul was not saying if i die as a result of armed robbery and they shoot me if you die as a result of armed robbery it's not gain it's a loss because one you are going to hell number two the kingdom is not advanced through that but that paul was trying to say look my passion is to pour myself as a drink offering and regardless of what personal results come to me or otherwise it is secondary so compared to the fulfillment of god's program your marriage is secondary that marriage that has topped the prayer list of miracle service every week and then later the number 27 is now god your will be done exclamation mark after you have written everything and vented out your lust he sees he looks from heaven the holy spirit sees our motivations while we pray he's watching us while we do the things that we try to do he's watching us while we gossip about people you would think it's because of a passion to see them improve it's simply a system to show a weakness in them so that you can justify your own that you are not willing to hand over to the cross let me tell you if you want to love God 
you will love me for what I'm teaching you this night. It's the key to make spiritual men. A life that is completely out. And you see, some of us, we come from cultures that the system of the culture by default makes you self-centered. Are we together? We come from cultures where the system of the culture by default was designed to make you self-centered. They look at you and say, promise, how old are you? And you say, uh, Maybe I'm, 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 I'm 32, or I'm 30, or I'm 35. And they say, ah, you should have a car by now. Ah, ah, what are you saying? You should have a car and have a five children and this. And then that challenges you. And you go back and say, Lord, they are insulting you. God said, they are not insulting me. If they are insulting me, I will react. I'm not offended. I say, God, me, I'm offended. I'm serving you. <laughs> you see, we create all kinds of theological messages. Let me tell you. If he's the one taking the glory, why are you taking the shame? Listen, whoever is taking the glory should be the person taking the shame. Please help me. Why do you claim God is taking the glory but you always take the shame? Are we together? Take it half on me, David. See how we pack the shame and we claim that we are giving God the glory. We are not. There's a song in my spirit. And the shout of the earth will be your praise. God forever and the light unto all will be your wonderful name. All the glory, Lord, is yours. God forever, all the glory is yours. Listen, Lord Jesus. If I remain barren like this, I give you praise. I will never stop serving you, but it is your reputation. So let the pressure go to him. Are we together? The moment people look at you and say, are you a woman or a man? Direct the shame to him. But you sit down and absorb the shame and say, God, give me a man child or I die. And God says, this thing you are doing is not for my glory. It's spiritual. You are sincere. I'll show you why many people never get rich. They think the key is doing business. They think the key is after all of these things, God looks at your heart and says, no, sir. You are better off without it than you are with it. Because when it comes to your heart, it will possess you and tear you. So you see that it's not all about imparting anointing. Apostle, I'm not seeing crowds in my ministry. I know if you speak a word, the doors will open. And here I'm, I'm just looking at you in your sincerity. But you dared your fellowship members that you were coming to collect power like a charm and say, Watch me. When I come back, you will see what will happen to this church. Your self centeredness drove you for hours on the road, sweating and praying, feeling spiritual, and you could not wait to see me. The moment you receive that anointing, whether or not you thought you received it, you were in a hurry. And he said, from today, don't play with me anyhow. Apostle laid hands on me. See the picture. Aren't you surprised at what you call the sudden change when people get results? They never change suddenly. They only manifested it. I told you, the prodigal son did the same thing with the elder brother. We keep, I used to accuse the, the younger one and leave the elder brother, but I found that two of them were only different versions of the same thing. One was quiet with his own while the other one executed it. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 22, verse 42. We're going to pray. I like us to read it. This was Jesus at Gethsemane. Hmm. Listen, listen, listen. There are two things here that we must understand. We are going to read it. But the first thing you need to understand is Jesus had his own will. It is okay to have your will. It is okay to have your desires. Only that your desires must come under divine scrutiny. And if need be, give way for the will of God to prevail. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yeah. Your desires are only worthy of execution 
when they find themselves in harmony with the divine will of God if at any point your desires no matter how intelligently constructed if there is a difference from your desires and God's desires one must bow and for many of us largely it's been God's desires bowing so salary leads you to the job are we together you look at the lady and say Kai I like the way this lady speaks don't you think she'll be a nice wife you see let me tell you something brothers let me give you a frank advice if you keep being carnally minded I give you two guarantees guarantee number one you will miss out on the will of God two you are going to pay for your foolishness when it has to do with marriage you have to take your eyes away from carnality and focus on God I saw that lady figure 8 be careful be very very careful I know what I'm saying doesn't make sense to many of us but you ask many people who are sadly regretting missing the will of God there is no price that is too great to walk in the will of God father if thou be willing remove this cup from me here's the language of spiritual Find expression in our lives. Nevertheless, not my will. I have a will. I have a desire. But nevertheless, not my will. Lord, your will be done. According to my desire, I plan to own a house in every state in Nigeria. But Lord, I bring that will to your scrutiny. Does this fit in the master plan of your blueprint for my life? And if at any point it's not part of it, I drop my ego. I drop my ego. These are men and women who will be used by God in this end time. Let me tell you, those who will be used in this end time are not just those who understand revelations and mysteries. Because the Bible says knowledge will cease, prophecy will cease. Those who will carry strange mantles in this season are men and women who God can obstruct their life at any point without having no need to explain it. There are too many of us who put God like a defense. Lord, tell me why I should leave Zaria now. And we put our hands in our pocket. I'm waiting for you. And then you have to come and God says, all right, uh, take it easy. The reason is because... I have seen something I said ah, I don't understand clarify when you make God that slow to birth his purposes through you there are dimensions you will never enter and the spirit drove Jesus he didn't say Jesus are you in harmony with me let's go to the wilderness you are going to get power there if you want God to explain to you the reason why he's doing everything in your life your life will be too slow for impact you have to start moving and let your mind catch up and say lord your thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil i don't have to wait until i understand you are too good to destroy me mm. you are too good to destroy me so whether you are in the valley of the shadow of death rather than sitting down and, and just talking and say god you serve kai if i were an unbeliever by now i would have done something God, do you know it's because I'm a Christian that I'm here? It's not like I don't know where Babalao is. All those stupid statements that we make when we are under fire is a sign that the fire is roasting our self-centeredness. That's why the Bible says when we walk through the fire, you will rush it. It has to burn off that dross so that when you come out like gold, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God five years after marriage no child and people come and you know people are so naughty they can say something i say ah, madam you are serving god what is all this one at least go go for koinonia now eh? 
apostle is anointed he can, is it pride what is stopping you and then after listening to those things you can go back and cry and say oh god give me a child or i die no you say father a child or no child let me tell you one truth me and you we are stuck to again forever a child is too small a reason for me to put my relationship with you on the line how many people have seen carry over and left god they say what, what is the use the day i served god i failed when i didn't serve god i succeeded and you hear preachers stand on stage and preach nonsense nonsense is that all your life is about why do you compare your relationship with god with academics is it ever a match why do you compare your relationship with god with marriage why do you compare your relationship with god with a job is, is our self-centered mundane pursuit that reduce God to be equal with these things God will never I cannot reduce God to the issues of my life the petty issues of my life and say God you are uh, uh, me ask him ask him you are spiritual people will I ever open my mouth and tell God he's not faithful why that what happened Just because there was no tea to eat, you, to, tea to drink and bread to eat, you carry the Bible and run around heaven. Oh God, are you giving me tea or I should tear my Bible? Is this your word? And God says, now nah, well, what is all this one? Just because of tea you are shouting? Self-centeredness. This is why the anointing does not work in the life of people. This is why God does not lift certain people. Inside, outside, online, you are hearing me and the Lord is speaking to you. Can your will bend to the will of God? Look at me. If your will cannot bend to the will of God, you are carnal. It's not an insult. It's a description. You are carnal and self-centered. Let me tell you how you know your will has bent to the will of God. When sacrifice no longer becomes an issue in your life if god says joshua selman remove the sim in your phone now and give somebody this phone i don't say oh god see let's be real me i'm trying let me, I, I want to show you why many of us are carnal the ease with which you release things is a measure of how much you are self-centered and i'm not talking of small things your turn singlet god says give you say, ah, after all i was going to even burn it so let me give this guy that's not giving God will never ask you to give what they gave you. He will ask you to give what you worked for. He's very smart. If he says, if he, he, look, let me tell you something. This our God is powerful. He will allow your emotions to be connected with the gift. Then he will ask you to release it. God will never ask you to release what you are not emotionally connected to. Because it doesn't make sense. The essence is not the giving. The essence is your heart giving him space to find expression when satan comes to you he studies the things that have not been surrendered to god that becomes his weapon of mass destruction in your life hallelujah let me tell you something i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not if the lord asks me now and says son let this be your last sermon as joshua selman in the name of jesus christ the resurrected lord i'm standing before him i will not lie to you when i drop this mic no committee council meeting will make me pick a mic again to preach i'll cry because i have a lot of passion for this but i love him more than that if you like carry placard bring back apostle move around with it and say no you must come back the demon that manipulated your mind you must come back i said i understand you are human if i were you i would do the same thing but i'm not going back again let me tell you brothers and sisters listen i have laid down things in my life you will not believe it's a price some of us finances whenever money is leaving you even if you are keeping it i don't mean you are giving it just like you are keeping it's not in your pocket you feel the pain just that is somewhere aside from your pocket that is the apex of carnality 
materialism and self-centeredness join together God does not want your money what does he do with it God does not want your clothes he wants your heart because when he finds your heart he finds everything sisters let me tell you why some of you are not rising at the pace you want your life is full of so much carnality it's not an insult you love God but the truth about it is there are many shrines and idols in your heart you have surrounded them so much you would dare not even allow the voice of God interrupt anything Lord don't come and interrupt my program I have my life all planned out same thing with the brothers that's why people are confused in Nigeria they don't know what to do with their lives they claim they are hearing God they claim they are walking with God but their lives are very clear that they are moved by insecurities and sociological pressures to show they are successful are we together the quest to buy a car the quest to get married the quest to have children you have all girls and somebody is asking you ah kilo day we need girls and boys so and you now turn and land the warning on your wife say madam you had that thing please i'm tired of this embarrassment oh yeah let's pray lord give us a child for your glory no give us a child for my ego my masculinity is being insulted and i want to use you to cure it and god says no way i'm not that cheap brothers and sisters this night i want you to come to a place where the anthem of your life is nevertheless not my will but your will be done you find peace in your life i like job job lost everything in his life as if that were not enough you can lose any other thing if you have your health you are okay he lost his health dogs would come and lick the source of job do you know what that means imagine seeing ali kodangote on the streets of zaria and these dogs that roam around licking him and then his wife standing by him with a dark dirty wrapper and people look and say job you where were the friends you helped and job sat down there and the wife was so attached to her reputation and she said job curse god and die and job said uh -uh, uh -uh. though he slay me though he slay me i know i've been embarrassed my ego has been stung till there's no ego yet will i trust him all the days of my appointed time i will wait until my change comes the three hebrew boys said oh king let it be known unto you that our god will deliver us we know that there is a provision in him to deliver us however even if aha uh -huh, your faith equation does not call that one you call even if doubt hey, nothing my husband must come december lord i tell you i've sown seed i am even taking communion please don't give god headache with all these stories save yourself all that immaturity say lord i give you praise i'm showing you the secret to peace there are men and women who have found peace you see them rejoicing and they are happy because they have found a system in god that it is more beneficial for him to be glorified than for your agenda to find expression it's not about the crowd it's about his kingdom it's not about Joshua Selman it's about his kingdom I bring you the message that represents the epicenter of the gospel that has been misunderstood even by preachers who preach the New Testament what they preach the new in the new testament is they say okay now there's no more works jesus has done everything enjoy that's complete nonsense it's an incomplete truth the key is he brought you to a state where you no longer are self-centered the motivation behind everything you do is now for his glory there's nothing that gives my life joy as that name be that word be glorified lord be glorified is my statement every time when i pray all i tell him is be glorified be glorified preparing for miracle service lord i thank you i love you with all my heart your people are coming they are trusting that you will use me and lord i thank you be glorified every time i stand on this stage and i look at you believe me 
I have no business trying to impress anybody. His glory. His glory. That's why I do the things that I do. We just rounded up our external ministration for the year and it's been a busy year. Sometimes while we are traveling, when we are on transit, I just sit down. The last meeting was last week and we had to leave, I think, 4.30 in the morning to catch up with our flight to Lagos. And while we were going in the night, I was saying, what is all this? Why am I risking my life like this? I didn't sleep. I wanted to rest my head and the next thing it was time. And I had to, what am I looking for? Ministry? Am I so dull that I cannot write a book? Can't I do a webinar? Are there not intelligent ways to make myself omnipresent? The internet has helped to make omnipresence possible. I can be everywhere. So what, what the heck is all this traveling around? And all of a sudden, you just remember for his glory. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you. To behold you as my king, I want to be where you are. Gotta be where you are. I want to be where you are. Listen, let me preach to you this night. Some of you, the load you are carrying is a demon that put it on your head. That load is not from God. The Bible says, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Your life is surrounded by too many self inflicted worries. Worries that make no sense. At the foundation of those worries is your self centeredness and your desire to solve those problems for the sake of your ego. But I bring you a message. Here's what Jesus said. Come on to me. It is a discourse with me. Come on to me. All ye that are heavy laden and are weary. He says, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. The worry in your life is killing you. Sister, the worry in your life is killing you. There are some of us who are older than our age. They look at you and they say, how old are you? Let me guess, uh, 37, you say me, I'm just 25. What, what made that? Worry added an age that was not given by God. You see people worry all the time. They get up in the morning, they are worried. Ah, the Bible says, which of you by worry can add one cubit? This is scripture. Do you know, honestly speaking, sometimes when 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 i drive around the road or when i stand i start laughing in the car i'm just laughing because i'm saying my god what made people like this how did people suddenly become like this you see a man quarreling somebody a conductor insisting that that five naira must be given and the person is refusing and then you stand somewhere someone is stealing they are catching him someone is cheating somebody in the market a lady is frowning her way to the market and you look at this and say my god who programmed us like this because when you die all these things end right now as i'm speaking an armed robber is trying to fly a fence he may die this night but he's thinking they are already calculating when you do this we will steal this one then we'll run out he may die this night that's his mindset when jesus says i will give you rest believe it there is a pastor right now who is not sleeping he's under pressure the messages i'm preaching are they new or are they still does it look like i'm growing pressure how can we multiply the members i already prophesied that we're going to have three times and now it's almost december we need like 1,000 more people. How can we do that? Your ego on the line. Forcing you to wake your leaders in the night. In the name of leaders meeting. But it's simply your ego on the line. Please rest. Prophesy to someone close to you. Say rest. Say it, rest. I bring you a system in the kingdom. Where men can hand over these self-inflicted problems. 
Look at this. Come, sir. If this guy is an armed robber, watch this. This is an example. If he's an armed robber and you catch him stealing, now I'm the policeman and I'm about, about to shoot him. Are we together? The moment I shoot this guy and he falls to the ground, is that a, an armed robber again? That's not an armed robber. Are you seeing? That's an innocent body that was controlled by nonsense for many years. An understanding made that body jump a fence by force. Something else can come into that body and that body suddenly becomes a pastor. It was never the body. The body did not jump on the fence by itself. A self-centered nature of wanting to be like the young guys too. We are like the young guys, the ones that have, you see, you see, there's this craze among young people, the ones who have made it. Let me see the designer you are wearing, the watch, how much, hundred and how many thousand, the, is, are you wearing Versace or this? And the other person said, Kai, you see, I'm tired of all this tailor, tailor thing. This guy that is sewing something, suit is bending around, I need to start dressing well. And we put ourselves under pressure. That's what some of you are doing now. You promise yourself to wear a particular weapon before Christmas. It's unnecessary. That money can pay your rent, your small house that you are, you are paying. Unnecessary things. Listen, please, I want you to write this down. The only thing that is worth your blood, the only thing that is worth your blood, listen to me, is your relationship with Jesus and if you are married, your marriage write it down these are the only two things in this life that is worth your blood worth you waking up to not sleep the only thing that is worth your blood is your relationship with jesus and if you are married your marriage two things they are the only things that the bible places so much priority onto even unto death Are we together? I think it was last week or the week before last. I sang a song. I will sing it again. When it's all been said and done All my treasures will mean nothing Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in married clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life brothers learn this don't be foolish husbands 10 years from now don't join the confusion of men who are punishing their wives and their children my ego my this all this nonsense that wrinkles men to death high blood pressure killing men they die of high blood pressure and what brought the high blood pressure is never solved oh i would never be that foolish never be that foolish this is what I'll do with my life. This is the part of the song that I really like. We'll raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. That's the reason why we are alive. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. 
prophesy one minute to yourself and say i reject worry say it i reject it no you came with culture but i reject you i reject self-centeredness i hand over the management of my life to the king of kings and the lord of lords whatever god cannot do cannot be done no whatever god cannot do let no man fool you that can be done Listen, listen, come. If God does not give you a wife, if you like wear suit, speak English, you can choose nonsense for yourself. The depression you are having, going online, wanting to like every lady, capturing people's pictures on your phone is nonsense that self-centeredness on rampage hand over that rubbish to god and rest if god does not give you a husband can't walk jump pray in tongues cook you will never marry until he gives it a man can have nothing except it is given unto you if god does not open access to wealth do business buy sell sell cement sell sand do anything i assure you you will never have this thing in the kingdom it's not an achievement it's a trust he said my son give me your heart god does not anoint you try to start a ministry you will be shocked that you are preaching well yet nobody will come because it has not been given everything in the kingdom is given until it is released from heaven you will never have it the worry of men is killing them listen listen because of the healing ministry i study a lot about health do you know i have found out i'm not a doctor we have doctors here but most of the disease what we call it disease people put themselves in an atmosphere that destroys them i tell you i have come to the conclusion that aside from demonic influences all sicknesses all sicknesses are psychologically related depression when will you come and build a house in the village and you are under pressure you have one million naira that you would have used to plan your life but somebody has stimulated your egocentric nature and you go to the village you start building and die there have you ever gone to uk no 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 and you are putting yourself under pressure selling your car selling your wife selling your children to get the tp to go to uk and live like a fool at the borders go and see nigerians abroad see them under bridges when a student is here in nigeria and he's working they tell him no concentrate but when he goes abroad he can be scrubbing toilet and be schooling they say it's all right our carnal nature producing this nonsense we see in society let it change tonight please it's like a it's like something spinning men the moment you are born you enter into it it starts spinning you till death you can come out of it and you will be amazed at how people have been killing themselves by themselves i live a very happy life i'm telling you i live a very happy life when people look at me and say apostle the burden of the ministry i say me burden of the ministry you are joking i can be tired though physically speaking but maybe fatigued like frustration from ministry never anybody who tells you i'm ever frustrated in my life go and tell that person is a liar from the pit of hell i am a very very happy person whatever i don't have i keep it when koinonia started here miracle service i, I will wear a suit that can buy a bike and climb the bike are we together i will climb the bike and it will come and there will be overflow of people here i will drop from the bike and people are watching ah this apostle on a bike i mean i don't have to sit down and tell myself i know how many times a jimmy can be a witness i went to go and buy a car and god said leave this place there was a time i finished the arrangement can you imagine that embarrassment standing you are happy you are smiling about to call your people and saying i'm making it and god said what are you doing here
your ego will not allow you to leave you say no way god collect it i will buy and you buy it and it never gives you joy when you insist on taking what god did not give you he will take back something he gave you write it down when you insist on taking what god did not give you believe me he will take back something he gave you we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you lord i will raise your banner high i shine your light so bright i sing in honor of you you know you know my people have learned a lot of things working with me because they travel do you know there are times we've gotten to the airport we just get to the airport and because we arrived late we've missed our flight they have they have learned this that i don't worry if someone calls me now and says apostle your house is on fire your car is on fire everything is on fire your bank is on fire i will tell them let me finish koinonia when i finish i look at it i say okay so what bond there's nothing we can recover glory be to god i give you praise do you know what i'm going to do i'll go back and i'll sleep to wake up and say ah my life <laughs> no i've grown up you know what we say alex okay in house it'll never happen never happen I'm giving you the secret of rest some of you are surprised is it really true because it is never a reality you have come to conceive in your mind you are already you have acclimatized yourself to worry you never believe that there can be such a reality it is your ego self-centeredness self-centeredness please please hear me hand over your life to God I, I'm not I don't mean born again you keep hearing me say this I, handing your life to God is not reciting salvation prayer no coming to a point where you relinquish ownership Lord it belongs to you nevertheless not my will but thy will be done nevertheless not my plans but your plan be done nevertheless not my desires but your desires i know the bible says he will give us the desires of our heart but brothers and sisters he will only give you the desire that is consistent with his will so you don't coin a desire by yourself and start imposing god using scriptures like a charm to turn his hand no the desire must be consistent with his will lord do whatever you want to do with my life it's yours it truly is yours I've told him this many times. Koinonia belongs to him. You can call me anything you want to call me. It's never my ministry. I don't have the power to run a ministry. It belongs to him. That's why he spreads it the way he wants and does with it things that are even more than my frame of wisdom. I imagine how depressed I would have been if I were doing ministry by myself and my strength. I live a very happy life most times when we travel for meetings they don't even know who apostle is as soon as we drop most times i'm in my polo with my earphones listening to something and they walk to mike and say good afternoon sir and then they turn to victor good afternoon and then they just see me and i can see the shock this is the thing we have been waiting for for hours at the airport there is this treasure in earthen vessels it gives me joy listen it gives me joy when i decrease because the more i decrease my problems decrease the more I decrease, my worry decreases. Whoever is the landlord is the one who renovates the house. I, I, I mean, let him, let him handle everything. He's not in me as a tenant. He's in me as a landlord. I give you the secret of peace. Quit the life of self-centeredness. Finances, all of this. I, I'm trying to do this. Keep your ego on the line. If you ever seek prosperity, let it be because you desire for his kingdom to come and mean it seriously and show it by how your current resources are advancing his kingdom. If your 10 naira does not advance his kingdom, your 1 billion will not advance his kingdom. One gentleman came and met me and he said that, um, that he wanted to be 
to, me to pray for him he's a kingdom financier i said really he said by god's grace he wants to be giving maybe like 100 100 million to like 10 different ministries every month i said wow that's great and this guy came to my place he didn't even buy orange of 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 50 naira i i, I told him i said you will not be a kingdom financier as you can see there, there, i am not looking for this but if you don't have the sense i am god's servant you believe i'm god's servant and you cannot buy orange of 50 naira right i see the shoe you are wearing i see everything you are wearing you come and you are twisting your tongue for hours telling me you want to sow 100 million your heart is not giving there's no giver in your heart so you're not going to give you are only a liar and the money will kill you if you even get it sir, it's not even, you will not get it at best you will just be comfortable god is not a fool you can choose your way and die with it but his way do you know as i'm preaching to you now when we begin to pray some of you will find out that certain sicknesses will just leave you because the foundation of you've taken panadol you've taken injection it has not left because the spirit that sponsors that thing is sitting on a mindset that is comfortable you hand over your life to god that's all absolutely that's all every time people ask you things you don't know the answer just tell them god be glorified god be praised ha huh? when will you buy a car now you are getting too old for my liking we give god the praise god is going to step in just diplomatically laugh and leave them your mother calls you and say don't come back home if there's no if, if there's nobody you are going to introduce uh -uh. my child are you cursed what is wrong i am your mother oh yeah i bless you go and bring a husband mommy the lord be glorified simple you enter your room and dance it away and dance it and let satan see you rejoicing Huh? You are you are a graduate. You are you are masters. You even have PhD. No job. What is wrong with you? This other guy is a smoker and he's working in NMPC. You claim to love God, huh? and even I mean you cannot even get a job anywhere. Jesus, be praised, be glorified. Not in the name of Jesus. I will go about what kind of I'm tired of unbelievers mocking me. Let them mock. If you take the shame, what are you doing with the glory? He cannot take the glory and give you the shame. Whoever takes the shame should also take the glory. Rise up on your feet. Take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over. Take over. I have touched the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to sing it from the depth of your heart hey, hey, take over take over i have come to the end of myself point number one lord take away this load from my life lift your voice and begin to pray take it away this unnecessary pressure to prove a point this unnecessary pressure is making me greedy is making me covetous take it away from my life Koinonia, pray. Lord, take this load. It's depressing me. I can't sleep because of it. I cry alone in the night because of it. I hand over everything to you. Bakata 
Pray, pray your way to freedom. Pray your way to liberty. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Listen. You are going to wage warfare in the next two minutes against all the traits that your self centeredness has produced. Listen. Some of you have bitter jealousy. You love God, but if you ever see something that is not in you, you, you get resentful. Covetousness. High mindedness. You crave for recognition. You will claim you don't, but it's written all over your life. Your appetite for recognition is to a fault. You may not directly go to look for it, but when they bring it, the way you jump at it shows you desire it. Are we together? What of lost? Lost. Your appetite for lost has driven you beyond imagination appetite for vain glory I am pastor this not brother this self-centeredness what of your desire to outshine others ladies you always want to be seen as a happening person it's a spirit you pride yourself in outshining others what of pastors the competitive jealousy that moves around men of God everybody trying to tear down another to show he is standing is self-centeredness what of all the religious activities done to command respect not just to glorify God prayers fasting look serious but motivated behind it is the desire for a name listen listen Nimrod Kush said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves the issue was not the city the issue was the name everywhere the spirit of the antichrist manifested is sought self-recognition i like you to pray mention those attitudes mention those attributes and let them die in your life lift your voice don't be arrogant. Don't claim there's nothing to pray for. Selfishness. Lord, deliver me. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. Jesus, deliver me from lust. Deliver me from pride. I have a bitter and a wicked heart deliver me from it I don't rejoice at the progress of others deliver me from it I'm so obsessed by my desires I don't care who gets hurt on the way deliver me oh God are you praying I have paid less attention to the needs of people it's always been about me, my opinion, my desire, what I want. Are you praying? hallelujah listen you are going to pray for supernatural compassion that listen beyond your desires you pay attention to the effect of your desires on the kingdom and on people don't want something so bad you don't care who dies listen listen don't go to people's houses 
and inconvenience them and not care whether they are being inconvenienced provided your desires are met you must have a sense of empathy you don't go to a house their resources are about finishing and you don't even have the spirituality to say no even when they offer you some things there are some things the answer is no yes cannot be the answer to everything are you hearing what i'm saying you must sustain the discipline it cannot be give me give me your hand is always open to collect there are times do you know do you know there are certain homes that sometimes i'm not saying this is the general reason but there are times i deliberately will not want to go do you know why especially some of our parents and loved ones i will not go because i know how much they honor me and sometimes they can be constrained financially are we together and i know that attempting to go there they will go out of their way maybe even borrow money to try to put things in place and i say no 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 or sometimes i take them unawares and i insist that they don't give anything maybe a cup of water just to bless the house but some of you i know that if you are functioning in this grace people will lock their houses when they see you because you will inconvenience people how many millionaires in many churches cannot testify because the day they just testify i paid a tithe of one million the pastor says see me after service the other office not the regular one and that man never rests text message all the time we need chairs in this church is god speaking to you let me know if he's talking all kinds of pressures the discipline to have empathy for people don't want something so bad you enter a room you want to cook your food you pour water on people's bed that's it the room you are self-centered you are more concerned about your stomach you don't care what happens to any other person there are husbands like that they never pray they never do anything the day they are going to pursue them from the office they organize night vigil everybody is seated at home peacefully the next thing you see one man of god who just enter like a thief and start singing around and he'll call everybody and nobody will sleep that night because the man has a problem but when somebody is about to die and they say ah my husband let's pray say, no 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 that's their business our society is full of self-centeredness that's why many husbands never enjoy their homes they claim they have experience in marriage but their self-centeredness destroys them many wives same thing many children same thing self-centeredness fools the society i like you to pray and say lord give me compassion to study the effect of my passion on others to make sure that I not only receive results, but that I don't damage the destinies of people in a bid to get my desires. Lift your voice and pray. Empathy of the feeling of others. The Bible says, for we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity hallelujah listen there are some of you after this meeting you are supposed to send text messages to certain people and tell them i'm so sorry i never realized that my desire has been hurting you so bad there are people you are supposed to send them text messages are we together yeah so bad they make their bed you bring your friends and scatter their bed and you stand up and walk away you are so conscious about your desire you don't care about the feeling of anybody to hell with anything there are others your relationship too many people have suffered because of your own relationship you carry your wife or your husband to be to a house loot their food eat everything i mean come on there are others is their job don't let anything you have intentionally cause trouble and break people down it's not worth it 
when the election Nigeria's election and the president now won Jonathan did something I'm not a politician but he did something that touched my heart there were so many prophecies that had come that he will win from men of God who had had credible track records and the moment that happened he would have put his ego on the line and shed the blood of millions of Nigerians but he said no his aspiration is not worth the blood of Nigerians and he declined that for me is no matter what went wrong in his government that I seen on the cake has made him a man of honor and an international elder statesman the model of his concession is what is being used in many African nations right now leaders who otherwise would not concede and receive def defeat his life has become a template that's what happened when you create a sense of empathy don't say I want the shoe so bad if I must steal I will steal I want the phone so bad if I must remove the phone of the seam of my roommate to just ask please grow up don't put people in trouble because of your desires it's too selfish one more time you are going to pray and say Lord help me I'm tired of self-centeredness now my eyes have been opened and I'm seeing how much because of my life so many people's destinies are almost been destroyed my gossiping around to explain myself has caused pain to all, too many people from today I receive grace to shut my mouth my blood mail has destroyed too many people I have joined the hands of the heads of good friends I have caused trouble for too many people it's not worth it I'm a child of God A stony heart put a heart of flesh listen two prayer points and we're done the next prayer point you are going to pray and say lord let nothing aside from my relationship with you ever be a do or die in my affair in my life again let, let i will be responsible within the limits of responsibility but Lord, I declare that aside from my relationship with you and my marriage, let nothing be a do or die affair in my life again to make me almost want to destroy myself to get it. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Believe me when I tell you nothing aside from the purposes of God is a do or die affair. You will kill yourself for nothing. Hallelujah. Let's round up. Matthew chapter 6, please. From verse 9. Malaba Sabrahasikete Baladaba. Matthew chapter 6, please. From verse 9. We're reading down to 13. Keep standing if you can. We're rounding up already. Let me teach you something you may have never seen. After this manner, Jesus is teaching us how to communicate with heaven. Jesus is teaching us how to have an addiction for the things of God. And this is what he says. After this manner, therefore, in this pattern, pray. Pray with this order of priority. Number one, our Father which art in heaven. Priority number two, I reverence you. In the eyes of Jesus, your reverence for God is more important than the forgiveness of your sins. Look at it. After this man, I pray. Hmm. Jesus is teaching here. Hallowed be your name. 
that is the foundation for everything that I do I want to reverence you that is the reason why I will not go and smoke it's not just because I'm running away from hell no I desire that you be lifted hallowed be your name next verse your purposes are you seeing now this is your prayer the moment you reference the father the next priority is anything that will move his purposes look at this i hallow your name and i desire your kingdom to come your influence and that desire is only achieved when your will is done in the earth so he focuses on the will of god is that how you pray no your needs that's what you drum heaven with you sing one or two praise and worship songs for two minutes and yell at heaven but he's teaching us how to pray your kingdom come this is what i want next verse so that your kingdom can come effectively give us our daily bread the reason why i need daily bread is not because i'm hungry the reason why i need daily bread is because it's part of the tools that will empower me towards your kingdom coming i need to eat i need supplies in my life i need the millions and the billions so that i can be comfortable and create the atmosphere for your kingdom to come on that wise give us this day our bread next verse because i want your kingdom to come and i know that you are a holy god that my sinful nature can act as a separation between me and you forgive me our debts as i forgive others so the reason why i am asking forgiveness is not just because i want to run to heaven the reason why i am asking for forgiveness is because i dis i love him so much i do not i want to clear everything away that can stop his name from being hallowed and stop his kingdom from coming are we together 13 and lead me not into temptation give me discernment not so that i will be called apostle joshua selman give me discernment because if you lead me into temptation and my life is destroyed i will not participate in your kingdom coming and deliver me from evil there is a wicked devil there are curses and yokes there are witches and wizards there are covenants that are out to destroy lives lord i desire your kingdom to come but i'm also aware of these things so deliver me from evil and the summary of that prayer a reiteration for thine is the kingdom every power that is communicated is the power that comes for that kingdom and thy glory forever amen he said pray in this manner and your prayer will be answered when was the last time you prayed like that god give me a husband why god give me a wife why god give me a job why god wipe my tears why don't ask me that question god give me your word says so if you don't do it except you are not god and you say ah that's not a correct statement i'm god all by myself there is nothing I ever ask God that the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it. If the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it, it is useless. Simple. It is completely useless. There are many hypocrites in the body of Christ pretending to have overcome a lot of things that is killing them down. There are many people who are greedy, as greedy as the devil. They will just pretend, oh, I may give, mm -mm see once you see yourself struggling to do certain things it's a sign that there is no grace walking there hallelujah and tonight we are going to deal with it how many of you have seen our fathers they come to church and they say fathers turn to your wife they turn to your wife and your mother will eye him let everybody know there is trouble at home don't fake anything here let the pastor see it per adventure God will reveal it to him and will solve the problem you know i counsel people and sometimes when the man is trying to be diplomatic the mother will say man of god this is what is happening in this family there is no peace period the man is trying to say well since uh, i didn't get the promotion things have not been happening the wife would just say since this suffering didn't start today even before you got the job you see 
if you have an open heart before God, you are ready to be delivered. Once you start giving flimsy excuses, tonight there's no excuse. Whatever does not look like the Garden of Eden in your life, contend for it until it leaves. Your contention, I've taught you, is not a sign that you are not a Christian. It's a sign that you are interested in seeing the reality of heaven become true in your life. Hallelujah. Curses are real. Yokes are real. Demonic covenants are real. Many families are under its influence. You don't cast out demons and principalities and powers and satanic manipulations just by saying, oh, Satan, go. The Bible says, for this kind, they overcame them by blood. The blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony. That's why there are many people please listen to me if you get this there will be big deliverances in your families and in your life and then you will see that that thing you were calling sickness just disappears never to return again hallelujah are you ready for what God is going to do in this place right now while I was writing my prayer request I said God tonight is tonight I want you to mean business with God. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Instrumentalist. We're going to pray. Very serious prayer for two minutes. Please rise up, everybody. It's time for your destiny to open up. It's time for your destiny. Listen. There are many of us here. You are the saviors that are representing your family right now. You know what I'm saying. There are certain families you are even the only one who is saved. And you know that if God does not use you to produce changes, things will never change. You are this savior that is arising from Zion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and begin to give God thanks inside and outside for this word. Please, no distraction, no roaming up and down. Please pray from your heart, inside and outside. The power of God is everywhere. Please pray, 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 pray like you mean business tonight. You're not murmuring your prayers, you're praying. Yes, Lord, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your grace. Lord, you will visit me. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, you will visit me. You will visit my finances, my job, my marriage, my family. You will visit everything about my life and everything that is not in divine alignment. I permit you to change it tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Twice the Lord revealed to me the things that will happen this night. Twice. I spoke about deliverance because tonight is truly a night of deliverance. I know many of you have seen deliverance, but this night we are flogging it out with destiny. Something must open up. Hallelujah. And I prayed, I said, Lord, please, let it not just be a few people. There are people who need a miracle desperately. Hallelujah. And the Lord assured me as ever, His mighty presence. My altar is calling you. My altar is, is calling you. My word.
worship is calling you, oh God. My praise is calling you. Show up tonight in a mighty way. My secret place is calling you, oh God. My prayer is calling you, Lord, my worship is calling you. Lord, we invoke your presence in this place. My altar is calling you, oh God. Lord, my altar is calling you. Hallelujah. I don't care what it is. Hear me. I don't care what it is. Every yoke of bondage and darkness, you will receive the full dose of God's power tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I sense his anointing coming. Lord, my altar is calling. My secret place is calling you, oh God. With my worship, I'm calling you, oh God. My worship. See, right from outside. Well, this started while I was praying. But right from outside, as soon as I entered, you know how prisoners move and they tie chains. I was hearing the noise of many chains. Right from outside, as soon as the car dropped. Please take serious what we are sharing tonight. I want you to pray and say what ever degree of influence the devil is claiming over your life and your family this night this night please pray Yes, Lord. We expect a mighty visitation. Get angry in your spirit. I hear the chains falling. Yes. I hear the chains. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus.
Now listen. The Lord is showing me certain people. You have been experiencing movement in your body. Especially your stomach. Please come out quickly. Things move physically. Physically in your body. Please come out quickly. To break every chain. Please save our time. Save our time. We have a lot of things to deal with. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. 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 of you in front lift your hands that devil of darkness lift your hands because that yoke is about to leave you that snake that moving object for many of you you will leave I'm going to count three just those of you in front I like you to shout Jesus at the count of three it will jump out of you many of you will feel it physically Physically, lift your hands, Father. Thank you. Let your fire and out of three. Every stranger in this body yeah. on the mark said, Go now, one, I two, three. Holy, shake up. someone is gone now your right leg you literally feel it move it's like a snake it moves there is a leg it ties your stomach literally you feel a lot of contraction it's going right now madam come hold my hands that's the lady I'm talking about bring her let her go now now out of her that devil of darkness shabakata sekete prosopata in the name of Jesus out go 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 I hear the chains falling I prophesy upon your life those of you standing Every foul devil of darkness that has found its way into your body that is responsible for all kinds of devilish infirmities. I command it to live now. I command it to live now. Return back to your seat rejoicing. We are going to take testimonies. Return back to your seat. Bring the lady. I hear the chains. I feel the chains falling. Let her go. Out. Now. I hear the chains. I hear the chains falling. I see the chains. 
I see the chains falling. Lift your hands, everybody. I hear the Hallelujah. God is going to deliver families right now. Please lift your hands. There will be representatives of families right now. Let me tell you something. There are all kinds of things speaking against families. See, I have an apostolic calling. I'm not a pastor. Are you getting me? My job is not to just motivate you. My job is to destroy and annihilate the works of darkness. Are you getting my point? So we are going to pray. The fire that fall in this place right now. There will be a baptism of fire. Some of you will feel the physical fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Shaka. At the count of three, you're going to shout that name, Jesus. And as you shout it, many of you will be shocked. The power of God will hit you like a tornado. I tell you, it's not just you. God is visiting families right now. Inside and outside, lift your voice. Worshippers, are you ready? At the count of three, with the clash of the cymbal, with every instrument, shout at the top of your voice, my God, let the fire of the Spirit visit families. Are you ready right now? One, two, three. That devil is a liar tonight. Please bring them out. Ultra, save time. Some of you join the ultras if they are too slow, please. I set it on fire. On fire. On fire. On fire. On fire. I set it. That devil that will not let you go must go for you tonight. I give the chains for falling. Oh God, I give the chains. I give the chains. Lift your hands. There are still more people. Lift your hands, everybody. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. Just the clash of the cymbal. Lift your hands. Just the symbol. Lift your hands. The fire of God is still coming on people. Just lift your hands. Keep them lifted. Yes, Lord, let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Like the dew of heaven. Right now, let it fall. Let no one stand. Bring them out. Kopo to chopa. Zakata pata. Zakata kata tata tata. Mighty deliverance is happening in this place. I tell you, brothers and sisters, whatever said you will not go tonight must go for you. I give the chains falling. falling. Lift your hands. We are still praying. There are any of you listen please I'm just flowing as the Holy Spirit is ministering to me there are many of you that your sickness is not really sickness bring them out please your sickness 
is a demonic oppression. What you need is not healing. For these are the kinds of people God will visit right now. Hallelujah. Because I'm seeing blue flames in the sky. Instrumentalists, don't stop playing, please. Hallelujah. Blue flames. And the Lord told me this one is to take away the spirits that sponsor sickness. Lift your hands. Many of you will be very surprised that certain things you have been calling diseases are yokes of darkness. Lift your hands, everybody. At the count of three, you're going to shout Jesus again. As you shout Jesus, many of you, those spirits will literally jump out. Jump out of your life. Are you ready now? Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands, everybody. Inside and outside, God is visiting everyone. At the count of seven, please, I want you to shout at the top of your voice. One, two, three, four, five. Get ready. Thank you, Jesus. Six, seven. Every spirit, spirits, spirits that sponsor sicknesses. Spirits, sicknesses, we only pray sicknesses now. things that manifest like sicknesses you keep wasting your money on drugs it's leaving you don't wait till you come out deliverances are happening to people now all of those who are here Satan you and every demonic cohort at the count of three you are living right now hear me all these spirits now run Two, three, go, 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 out, 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 out now, out, out, come out now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me. This is very important. The Lord is showing me someone you've been having. It's like something is hooking you on your neck. Just your neck. You try to cough as if you want to cough it out. Please, who is the person? The Lord is ministering to me. 
There's somebody with that situation. Please, once I call your case, don't waste our time. We are trying to beat time. Honestly, there is done. It will go now. Sister, look at me. Look at me. That thing will disappear. Hold my hands. Out. Now. In the name of Jesus Christ. My hands. Place one hand on your throat. Out. Now. All of you just lay your hands there. Let me just pray at once. Please, we are not playing pranks. We are going to take some testimonies right away. There are people who are receiving miracles right now. Please be checking yourself. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Lay your hands. Father, let this demonic thing that is hooking your people go as a sign of the release you are bringing. Right now in the name of Jesus, it leaves. What's wrong with this baby? Come. Are you the mother? Yes, sir. What's wrong with him? Sometimes he's still hiccup. Hiccups. Look at this boy, as small as he is. Stops now. In the name of Jesus Christ. He stops and does not return again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Does not return again. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for you, mother. Right now, help her, please. This, this cause of delay in your life is gone. Now, let her go. Leave her now. I proclaim you healed now. Please go back and check yourself. Go back and check yourself. Hallelujah. There is someone here. Hallelujah. Please, are you listening to me? It's like muzzle pull. You can just be moving and it will hook you. And you can just stand on your leg. This has been happening again and again. You feel it like muzzle pull. It just holds your leg. Move. Please, who is the person? Come, just lay your hands there. I'm praying for you right now. It will leave you right now. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit. Please lay your hands there. It is going to go. Thank you, Jesus. Father, right now, let your power rest upon them and let that demonic thing go. Be gone now. 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 And as I lay my hands, just check yourself. Now. In the name of Jesus, do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Check yourself now. Check yourself now. Check yourself. Check yourself. We'll take testimonies. Hallelujah. See, miracles are happening. Let's, let's just finish up and then we'll have time for testimonies. Hallelujah. Listen. The Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing a lady. Hallelujah. Please, let's have our attention. The Lord is ministering to me. Show me a lady. You had, a th you saw a cat. Now, I don't know if it's physically or spiritually. You saw a cat. It came to fight with you. And from that time, you've not been feeling fine. You're feeling like there's something inside you. Who is the person? A cat. A cat. It's an encounter with a cat. The Lord showed me. Please, inside or outside. When we get that person, let, let the person come out quickly. Quickly. I need to pray for the person. This is very demonic and we must deal with it. A cat. You saw it. It came. I don't know what, what, happened, what transpired, but it's a very demonic thing. Please, when we have the people, let's deal with it. Now, I'm going to pray for the sick. Those who are sick. Please, all of you who are sick, just come and line up. If you can form two lines, one in front, one at the back. Very quickly. You came here sick. Please. This is a miracle service. We're here for you. We are not in a hurry. Ushers, please coordinate them or protocol whoever. Coordinate them. Just make two lines, one in front, one at the back. Please hurry up, worshipers. Give us a very powerful worship while we get the devil out of these people's lives. Thank you.
Now it's time for God to minister to the sick. While you're standing, talk to the Lord and say, Lord, it's over. It must leave me now. Exceedingly, abundantly, far above all. All you could ask. I want you to see that sickness for the last time because it's leaving you. According to. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your power to heal. Somebody help me. Please, as I lay hands on you, just begin to check yourself. Check yourself. God is able to do just what he says he will do. He is going to fulfill every promise. What's the problem? You have a uh, father. Who brought this small girl? My auntie. Auntie, where are you? Who is who brought this small girl? Please, if you bring people that are very small, come with them. Is you? Come, auntie, come. What's wrong with her? She's sick. What do you mean she's sick? What's wrong with her? Oh. Eh? She's Oh, cough. Oh, okay. That's all right. God bless you. Sweetheart, look at me. You believe Jesus can heal you? You believe Jesus can heal you? Okay, help for you. Look at me. Help. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh
you're the one that saw the card. Please, let's have some people. We, we want to move without stopping. Huh? This is not their work. Media, where are you? A representative should come and hold the mic, please. What, what did you say? I saw a cat, a black cat, as his name, my mother is the sick. That devil is a liar. It will leave you right now. Praise God. Tell your mother the end has come. Because the Lord just delivered you in a very mighty way. Father, perfect this deliverance. Now, let her go. Now! Hallelujah. Watch us, please continue. God bless you. See, I want to ask you, hear me. Hold on, let me explain something. There are some of you who, when I pray for you the way you are looking at me, it's as if you don't believe what I did. I ask you what is wrong. Are you getting me? I'm just flowing by the Spirit. When I lay hands, some of you are trying to explain and you feel bad that I'm not responding. I don't need to know. The same power will solve the problem. Are you getting my point? Occasionally, I may ask you, it is just, I'm just flowing as the Spirit is leading me, okay? Bless you, worshipers. Please continue. Son, please. Daniel, what? Just about two, three months ago. So I have taken to hospital. First hospital. What was the issue? What's the issue? Maybe like he put a lot of saliva in his mouth. His mouth has burned to one side. It's not working normal again. It's not smart again. It's not working. It looks like an imbecile. But he was not born like this. This thing started like just about three months ago. Yes. What? See how wicked the devil is. What happened to him? I mean, what? What? According to him, he plays ball. He's a goalkeeper. According to him, he's a goalkeeper. He's, yes, he said he dived and hit his head on, on against stone. The first hospital I took to, they say it affected his uh, head, and his brain. But when I went to a teaching hospital last time, the consultant said there's nothing like that. But he fell to a pediatric uh, clinic, which were, were given an appointment by February. But I believe God will work upon him. That I say we should come here this morning. Absolutely. Look at me. Boy, does he understand me? Don't worry, don't worry, sir. It's okay. Look at me. Jesus will heal you right now. Huh? Hmm? Look at the boy crying. It's okay, don't cry. This is why this meeting is put together. If this is the only guy that we heal and he experiences the love of Jesus, let me tell you, this sacrifice is worth it. Are you hearing me? Boy, look at me. Don't cry. Don't cry. It's all right. It's all right. 
Look at the fact. Oh, please, please, somebody help this man with the handkerchief. Mm -hmm. I beg you, sir. Please, or anything. Please, let's let this is. Please, please, sir. It's it's all right. It's all right. You may not know how much he has been spending. You see, this is a wicked thing. You see what pains me? This is why we deal with these things. It's all right. Please, 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 daddy. It's all right. Because I know why you are crying. You are not just crying because of him. You are crying because your finances are tight. Is that true? This is what the Lord is ministering to me. Is that true? Yes, sir. Why you are crying? You are not just crying. I have cancer. I'm here for both this person and my mother. I've been to you about two weeks ago. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Please help him with it. Please. Brothers and sisters, when a man cries, the situation, this is not... I think this man is a police officer also. When a police officer is crying, thank God for koinonia. Boy, look at me. Can he talk? Say Jesus. Jesus. Say in the name of don't worry, I'll pray for you. That demon that is responsible for this, you are leaving this boy now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Out! Now! Come out of him! That issue of partial paralysis is gone. Right now. That saliva is gone. Stand up. Come on, look at me. Shout it. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Give Jesus a shout. Say Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at the Father rejoicing. Look at. Give Jesus praise. This is why this meeting. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. She go by tearing and turn me away. Hey. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Come and dance, come and dance. She go by tearing and turn me away. Come and join me. Stand up, you stand up, stand up. You couldn't walk very well. Walk now. Come, follow me. Jump, 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 jump. Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Look at me. You are family members. I prophesy to you, your finance changes now. I prophesy to you, and I use this as a point of contact. Whatever the devil has used to cripple your life, I speak it right now. See, when the Lord does a miracle, there is an anointing. You take advantage of it. Miracles are languages. I command everything that has refused to work in your life. This night, I command it to walk. I command it to walk. I command it to walk. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord, the Lord increase you. Please, let's continue. Go ahead and play. God is doing great things. We are still going to take some more testimonies. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Go back, sir. We are going to take a few testimonies. And Benga, let's do it this way. There are people receiving miracles right now. See, the moment you find a miracle, don't sit back. Hallelujah. Uh, ushers will help them. Once you check your body, there are many things changing right now. I want you to move here quickly. They'll come and confirm you and will allow you to share. To the shame of the devil.
go ahead both those that i'm praying for those in the congregation those who were delivered something happened to you go ahead and pray god is doing mighty things here out The Lord is showing me a wicked spirit tying this lady down. Let her go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Out! Release her. And this delay, this thing you put in her stomach, take it out now. Take it out. Now. Let it go. Out! Just as you hold them, make sure you are praying in tongues. You must saturate the atmosphere with tongues. You don't just hold people like that. Devils are living. Whether it's through me or through you, they should go. Yes, Lord, let it go. By your power, by your fire. Yes. 
sune You felt something coming out. Yes. The devil that wants to remain in your body, he must let you go this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. And then I fell down to the ground and then I was brought here. I just felt very light. Very light. Yes. You are free in the name of Jesus. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. Hallelujah. Any other testimony? Okay, while they come, let's just have the testimonies first. And Hallelujah. That's a powerful song. It's a miracle. Old school but powerful songs. Alpha, you are Alpha and Omega. It's a miracle. Hallelujah. the anointing I can do stupid things but I'm not just acting foolishly where's the water is it not the water you brought for me I said you should give her I didn't say you should collect it huh I know why I drank it and I gave her take my dear you just do what I asked you to do take it there are 
are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit, the water. Lord, be cleansed. Now, that demon, I see you in the spirit already. Out you go. On your mark, get set, go. Go. Now, go. Out of her. Out of her. And return no more. Cancer. That's why I said cancer. Uh, uh, uh. That cancer. one they said. Uh, that one they said. Doctors told you. Yes. Did you bring your report? No. You didn't bring your medical report. No. Prostrate cancer. Uh, that what they said. You believe Jesus will heal you? Why not? Right now. Yes. Daddy, God will heal you right yes. now. How many of you believe God will heal our daddy? Cancer, you are a spirit. Mm. And in the name of Jesus, depart from this body now. Together with all the symptoms, prostrate cancer, go. Go. You will go back to the hospital and they will not see a trace of cancer in your body. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for somebody. I'm seeing pile, pile pile and this is not just ordinary pile it's quite advanced please let's hurry up pile i need to prophesy on somebody look let me tell you something um this is this is a family are you getting my point this is a family and this is this is like a hospital it's a medical center. When you enter the hospital, if they say remove your clothes and lie down, you won't tell them, do you know I'm an adult? You will just lie down quietly because this is, this is a spiritual hospital where we deal with a lot of nonsense that Satan wants to bring in people's lives. This is not the only person. There are at least two other people. At least once we pray for you, don't come and stop us after the meeting and say, actually, I was trying. This is a family. Hallelujah. Jesus, there's one more person. Yes, Lord. Now! Thank you, Jesus. You are a wicked spirit. You are living. Shagapata. I see you already. You are going. I tell you, discernment is a powerful gift of the spirit. Content. I'm going to pray that many of us need, need discernment. Let her go. You see, medicine calls it pile. But look at the real thing. It would have been anything. That's why I tell you, go now. Please, don't waste our time. Go, leave. In the name of Jesus. There's one more person. I hope that. Hallelujah. 
Now, I need to pray for somebody. This is a funny case. Your money used to disappear and miss physically. Please. This is something that has been very serious. You will keep money, you will count it. It's not the same. Amount. I know some of you are funny until you see it happen in real life to people. Come out, the Lord is showing me. Physically, I don't just mean you spent it. You don't know what you did. This is something that has been surprising you. Please, there is a woman, an elderly woman too, who is supposed to be here. I'm seeing it. The Lord is showing me. Please, please, let's hurry up. I don't know why you are surprised that your money is missing when the Bible calls Satan a thief. <laughs> See, it's not about stealing. Do demons eat money? No, no. It's a language in the spirit. It's a symbol of oppression. Why will God mention a case like this? If not that God is leading you in your meeting, will you mention a, a case that doesn't make sense like this? The Lord will set you free. Hallelujah. These are activities of the devourer. Mama, you're welcome here. Jesus Christ will visit you. Thank you, sir. You believe that? Yes. Jesus Christ will visit you. Amen. Huh? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Visit Mama even right now. Look, like, brothers and sisters, don't let any man confuse you. Wickedness is real. Are you getting my point? Wickedness is very real. Because, look at me. Where is your mother? In my place. Where is your place? Cameroon. Do you know why I called you? Do, do I know you are from Cameroon? Do you know why I'm talking to you? Because I saw light left this mama and came to you. Hold on, don't cry. What is wrong? Wait, hold on. What is wrong with you? What's wrong with your mother? They went to hospital. She's still suffering with the hand. I was praying and I wanted to move to the line, but I saw light and the Lord said, uh uh, address this lady's situation right now. Your mother, it has not been treated till now. They went to hospital, but it's still there. It's still there. Because you see, I'm seeing a signboard with obituary, and this thing would have happened since last year. Is this year? I'm seeing since last year. A sign of obituary, your mother. But we lost our sister too, our elder sister. Hold on now. It's the spirit of death. Hallelujah. We are going to rebuke it because this is what I'm seeing on you too. Look at me. That's why you dream. Dead people. Dead people. <laughs> dead people. You see dead people in your dream. They yes. come to you. Sometimes they're trying to give you something to eat. Yes. Is that true? You, the Lord will deliver you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Go! That wicked spirit. What does the living have to do with dead people? Hallelujah. I need to pray for some people now with this kind of situation. Hold on. Uh, the Lord is ministering to me. There are at least five people. I want you to come and stand here quickly. You see dead people in your dream. Sometimes they try to force food on you. Please, hold up. The Lord is showing me. Let's just handle this once and for all. If you are still thinking about it, go back to your seat. Dead people, they come to you in your dream and they give you food. This is, this is the Lord. Please, separate the lines. Just stand here. It's a miracle service who will minister to you. Please make sure you don't go anywhere. I'm still going to prophesy. While we are doing that, did you bring your prayer request? Lift up your prayer request. If you didn't write it, you will be cheated. Please, in one or two minutes, any other person who has not written his prayer request, or I'm giving you two minutes. Send a text to your loved ones. Tell them forward your request quickly. We are going to collect it right now. The Lord gave me an instruction. Usually when we pray for the prayer request, we'll just go and burn it. But the Lord said I should pack everything and I'm going to be praying from this night till tomorrow morning on it. That's the instruction the Lord gave me. Let me see the devil that will stop your prayers from being answered. 
Hallelujah. Now, be healed. Please, just write it. If you have not written it, we are giving you one minute. Those online, I hope media has a way of reaching them. Please, you can send a text to your loved ones right now. Tell them, send me your prayer request and you can add it to your paper. We don't read anybody's prayer request. We just pray on it. So if you think you wrote something and there are still some other things you should write, please write it. Please. I have my own prayer request. It's an instruction God gave us. We are not, please, if they need papers, can somebody help them? Okay. The ushers have papers. If you need papers, just wave your hands and the ushers will locate you. Thank you, sir. Let me just finish praying for these people. Be healed, right? Thank you, Jesus. That delay leaves your family now in the name of Jesus. Go! Out! Now! Out! Out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Out. You too. You are following me like an usher. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, you can go back to your seat if I've attended to you. Let's just decongest this place. Hold my hands. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, I, need to, I need to really pray for you. This thing I'm seeing is not good. We need to pray. Because I'm seeing a ring. I'm seeing five rings on your hands. This is what I'm seeing. This is a spell. It must leave you now. It will not affect your home. It will not affect your life. It will not affect your home. We break it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shataka balakata. I'm seeing fire burning you. Something is living. It's like an altar on fire. Shake up Radoko Sopra. Go. 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 In the name of Jesus. Shekatataba. I see an altar. And this is like a village. The Lord is showing me. I'm seeing like a village. I'm seeing the horn of a cow inside a shrine. Let it be on fire now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release you breakthrough, supernatural, inexplainable breakthrough because this thing tied the finance of her and her husband. I command its release now in the name of Jesus Christ. Instrumentalist, you are resting. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to deal, see, Immediately I finish with this. We are going to deal with marital issues. Marriage. Delay. This delay in marriage. We are going to handle it right now. Sister, look at me. You. See, you. Where you are. God is going to visit your family. God is going to visit you. Do you come? Come. This is one of your major requests. Come, run and come here. Come. Is it true? Is it true? What, what is it? Why? What is true? My sister, my elder Your elder sister yes, is not married. Yes, Every is just disappointment yes, here and there. And it's one of your major requests. Even as you were standing there, yes, you were telling God to visit you. To let you know God knows you. You will receive your own right now. Hold my hands. Thank you, Jesus. Let it be for her sister. Now, that cause of marital delay, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. God is doing a major work. Major work in her. Major work. Major work. Kabada Pretekajeba. Every altar of darkness. Please, if I pray for you, just look quickly. Go! Look at me, my dear. This is demonic. Don't put yourself in any sort of God in the name of friends. Eh? 
Don't let them do all kinds of things. Who made this mark on your body? Look at me. You're a very great lady. You're going to be very wealthy. Very, very wealthy. Don't forget about the body of Christ. Huh? You are an usher. You are acting as an usher. Come. Let me finish with you first before you continue. Come, hold my hand. She's serving in that. So, go. You are in the name of Jesus. You are leaving her now. Go. your hands together please those of you here what what do living people have to do with dead people many of these things you are seeing is not just about you are you getting my point I'm going to pray for you lift your hands lift it up Let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Now I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to release you. Many of you will be surprised. It will leave you. Father, every demonic thing that has to do with dead people that has brought your people in bondage right now in the name of Jesus I'm asking by the power of the Holy Spirit at the count of three let that power break out of your life my God the fire of God is strong one two three come now let the power of God set you free now 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 everything with dead people I separate you now in the name of Jesus it is done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift up your prayer requests. Oh, you've dropped it. Okay, please bring them outside here quickly. While, now listen. Supernatural marriages. There are some of you, every relationship you enter, something must happen and it will scatter. But first and foremost, please, before marriage people, if you are in business here, yeah, come out. I don't mean if you want to do business, please. If you are in business, come out. If you come out here and we don't see you doing anything, don't come and lie here before God, please. You have started, you have started. Understand what I'm saying, please. Don't just be emotional. You are doing business that we can see everybody knows ah. it's time for your business to rise don't sit back this is why we are putting this program strings please Brothers and sisters, it's part of our mandate to prophesy and release prosperity upon people. And I want you to believe it. 
Hallelujah. That an anointing will come upon you. And that you will run with the spirit of Elijah. Many of you will be surprised at what will happen from this night. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands. Those who stand in Every mountain has giants. The bigger the giants, the greater the mountain. Until you conquer the giants that are in every business mountain, you will not prevail. Let me tell you, you can try and do all you know to do. But when those giants are conquered, it will be a landslide victory. And this is what I want to help you do. Lift your hands. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. of you need creativity many of you need favor some of you just need access please lift your hands no man brings himself out of a hole you need another person to help you hallelujah I tell you financial mantles will fall upon some of you here but first we need to kick out some giants from the mountain hallelujah lift your hands at the count of three those of you here, I just want you to shout just one word. Jesus, very loud. You will be surprised that there are some forces tying down your shops and your businesses. It will go and I will release grace. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? My God, I feel the power of God. Help me with the super. At the count of three. One, two, three. Let him go. Now. Let him go. Release his business. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Wicked men want to destroy this guy's business. I'm seeing people sitting down. And discussing. Let him go. It's a popular business. This woman. Social center. I'm seeing social center. So you do hair. I be hair. You are is it plaiting hair? Is it true? The fire of God is coming on your heart now. Take it now. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing somebody. You do dry cleaning. Dry cleaning. You wash and iron clothes, but this thing has not been working. Dry cleaning. You are not the only one. Dry cleaning. Dry cleaning. Come. Hold your hands together. Sharp akata balada. Lift it up. Shende bada kata la kapa teke teke pa rakata kata pa kate kake pa kata rante pre kate kepa every power holding down this dry cleaning business in the name of Jesus go 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 in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah now in the name of Jesus I send a prophetic word to your business. I command dry bones leave dry bones leave dry bones leave those who are looking for shops we give you shops here 
I don't care whether they shop or not. We give it to you now. Wherever you wanted to put your business and they said they will not give you a place, go back and get your place. Those who need capital, may God by favor locate you this night. Even your enemies, may they bless you. Hallelujah. Many of you need customers. I don't care whether school is on session or not on session. It's irrelevant. From the north to the south to the east, all over Zaria and beyond, I call for those who should patronize you in the name of Jesus. Whoever has spoiled your name so that men don't want to patronize you, I change that testimony now. I change that testimony now. Hallelujah. Oga okay, John, photographers, two of you come. You cannot be serving in Koinonia and be like the rest. Hold your hands. Oga okay, John, look at me. Do you believe in what I'm saying? You believe in what I'm saying? You will be surprised. Lift your hands, both of you. Father, for the sake of your house, for the sake of your house, I hold your business. Step into a new dimension by the power of the Holy Ghost on common access in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. On common access. Take them to places they would never imagine. Give them opportunities. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. Go and succeed. Go and prosper. Now look at Let me tell you one big secret. Many of you, what you is greed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Greed. Greed. Some of you don't even tight in your business. If you are not faithful in tithing, the devil will eat you up no matter how many days you pray and fast. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your personal tithe is the, as a ministry, we tithe. That's why no devil can touch anything here. Are you getting my point? Be faithful in tithing. Deal in integrity. I bless your business. You are blessed in the city and you are blessed in the country. Where men have deserted you so that no man passes through you. I call you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Let your gates be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. I command the forces of the spirit to align themselves and begin to walk in your favor. I command the earth to speak for your favor. In the name of Jesus, go and return with your testimonies. Everybody rise up as we pray on the request. Your blessing and honor and glory and power. Please, if you have not submitted your request, do it quickly. Blessing and glory, honor and power forever. Hallelujah. Please don't burn them after after the prayers. Please pack them, put them in a bag, take them to my house. You will hear unusual testimonies unusual testimonies hallelujah in one minute stretch your hands here and begin to pray radically in tongues and say lord now is the time please outside stretch your hands towards the screen
in the name that is above all names. As I walk upon this request, I command them to be turned into testimonies. This spiritual technology unto the God that answers prayer shall all flesh come. My God, I pray from now let testimonies erupt solve impossible situations change impossible situations i stand under this apostolic unction in the name that is above all names let there be the signs of an apostle i command i invoke the heavens let there be a shifting let there be a movement let there be a release of miracles financial miracles marital miracles health miracles job miracles in the name of jesus christ Finally, before I prophesy, hallelujah, you know that there seems to be a yoke, please don't be emotional, of marital delay in your family, even if it has not affected you. Come out and stand here quickly. If we are too many, just stand, just stand on the lines. Please. Take this seriously. 40 years, no marriage. 45 years, no marriage. Or ladies, no marriage. Or men in your family, they marry and die. Let's get that devil out of your life right now. Marriage is the will of God. Marriage on time is the will of God. See, brothers and sisters, if you're doubting whether this will happen, go back to your seat. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. It said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. I told you nothing just happens. Nothing. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, all of you here. We need to end this. Many of you just came and met battles you don't know anything about, yet you are suffering it still. I don't care how old you are. We must open that marital door. And not just to one anyhow man because your age is already advanced. They say, let's just manage. No. No. You're going to marry. Listen, sisters, don't marry an irresponsible man in the name of just trying to manage time. And our brothers, don't just jump and marry any Jezebel that will kill your life and destiny. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. We need to break this thing. Because many families are suffering this thing. And for those who have gotten married, you see that there is no child. And by extension, even praying for barren people right now. Lift your hands. Father, in this November miracle service, I'm praying right now. Many of you will be surprised. The spell of marital delay. Instrumentalist, are you ready? Look at me. What I'm seeing is rain in the spirit. When I count three, I want you to shout Jesus. That rain will drop. Because there are many of you, I'm already seeing rings. Spiritual rings. Covenants. This is what is stopping you. Please shout it with all your heart. My God, as they shout, this rain fall. Listen. Listen. There will be a divorce here. Many of you, I'm seeing rings on your hands as you're standing. Meaning you are already married to demonic entities. This is the divorce. We are going to cancel this thing now. Whether you believe it or not is irrelevant. I'm telling you what I'm seeing. Lift your hands. Father, I pray by this power as they count, Lord, I pray that any spiritual marriage that is not of God, that is 
tying physical marriages. It will catch fire now. At the count of three, get set. One, two, three. Shake it, take it, take it. Now, spiritual marriages. Break, 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 break. Every covenant, marital covenant, entered in on your behalf. It catches fire now. We command a divorce. A divorce now. A divorce now. A divorce now. This is what is responsible for the delay of many of you. Pretty lady, no husband. Virtual sister, no husband. Handsome, responsible brother, no wife. People say it's how Nigeria is. There's nothing like that, oh. There's nothing like it's how Nigeria is. I prophesy to you, for many of you, especially for those of you who are of marriageable age, by this time next year, return with your supernatural marriages. I change what needs to be changed. We shift what needs to be shifted. Hallelujah. Sisters, hear me. Wherever your husband is, I don't care where he is. If he's alive, I bring him into your life. Brothers, in the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy the struggle is over. Now, the struggle is over. You are not a liability to any sister. You are a blessing. Therefore, the sister that will agree for you and mean it from her heart, I bring her into your life. Hallelujah. And for any of you that have seen traces of barrenness in your family, they get married, but they can't deliver normally except through CS. I change that report now in the name of Jesus. I change that report now. I change it now. I change it now. Please return to your seat quickly. Return to your seat quickly. Everybody rise. Let me just speak the last prophetic word. And then we'll wrap up. We're out of time. Just leave them. If, if they cannot stand up, just leave them there. Please, quickly, quickly. Everybody stand up in honor of the Lord. Lift up your hands, strings. Boy, stay students, stand up. These gentlemen have been here all the way. Hold your hands together. Lift it up and look at me. They came for IT all the way from Eboye. And God from, from Kogi, oh the Kogi guys. You will catch fire. Take it to your campus. Set every devil in Kogi. Drive them out. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Look at me. You will receive an anointing. You will receive a mantle. See Kabbalah. Elijah said, if you can see me as I'm taking up. Father, in the name of Jesus, let something mighty fall upon these ones. Grace for signs and wonders. Grace for uncommon revelation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are the boy students? Who are going back quickly come out please save our time a boy students that came on it in zaria appreciate them as they come come and line up quickly it's time to catch the fire and take it to a boy state all of you hold your hands quickly you didn't just come for it you came for a spiritual it lift your hands lift your hands
you will go back with fire. Zekata. At the count of three, the power of God will fall on you. Right now, get ready. One, two, take it now. 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 Go and burn. Go and burn. Set your campuses on fire. In the name of Jesus, heal the sick. Cast out devils. Mike, right? Mike, allow where is he could be come. Hallelujah. I, I said I was going to pray for him. Hallelujah. I heard that he just signed a check to pay off for this venue. Hallelujah. I'm told. Come. You cannot give into the kingdom and remain ordinary. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy vats to overflow. Let a financial mantle come, O God. According to Proverbs, he said, For the sake of thy house, I desire thy prosperity. I lay my hands upon you. Step into a new level of grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord honor you. I give your seed a voice. Go round the earth. Gather your kind and return back to him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Everybody, please lift your hands. I always tell you that this is the part that I love most. I know we are late, but it's better for your destiny to change. You must return next month with your testimony. Please lift your hands. Many of you don't know the power of prophetic statements. Where's the guy from University of Joss? University of Joss. University of Joss. Where's University of Joss again? Come quickly, please. Save our time. You will catch that fire and take it to your campus. Drive every devil out. Yes, Lord Jesus. For you will do mighty things. Lift your hands, both of you. I'll be wait on you for fire. Take them to another level, oh God. Take them to another dimension. Fill them with uncommon power. Let their limitations melt. Lord, as these hands come, let an anointing come upon their lives. In the name of Jesus. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. All right, foot me now, quickly. Foot me now. Foot me now. Please come out. Lift your hands, both of you. Hurry up quickly. Hold your hands together, lift it up. Father, in the name of Jesus, May they step into amazing levels of the anointing. Take the anointing to your campuses. Now, now, now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you. Lift your hands. Every closed door. Every door that has been closed over your life and your family. I command right now. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Everything called failure in your life, failure, it will become a forgotten testimony in the name of Jesus.
that spirit that causes delay it works for others until it is your turn right now in the name of jesus shake it take a taba. i command acceleration you will run like elijah you will run like elijah all those trusting god for jobs by 28 december the next miracle service i don't know how god did it. lord shake end to end of every office and give your people jobs receive it receive it receive it hallelujah every terminal disease afflicting you or any member of your family right now i command that disease on your mark set go 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 hallelujah hallelujah everything the devil has stolen in your family joy peace progress please believe what i'm about to speak into your life everything the devil has stolen i prophesy right now receive sevenfold restoration sevenfold restoration sevenfold restoration hallelujah i command the favor that distinguishes a man the favor that separates you from others in the name of jesus let that mantle of favor let it come upon you now receive it receive it receive it every spirit of death that says you will not see december lift your hands this is very important the way people are dying like chickens every spirit of death i put a mark of the blood and i command it to pass by your family pass by your family pass over pass over hallelujah all those trusting god for admission you have it finally I said you have it finally. I don't care who is the rector or who is the VC. That's none of my business. We legislate in this place. Receive your admission. And anyone here that any lecturer is saying you will not graduate, they will sign your paper as you graduate. Hallelujah. Finally, I pray for your finance. We are a blessed people and I pray for you. Right now, whatever makes you not to tithe, whatever makes you not to give and obey the laws that bring increase, whatever makes you feel God is cheating you, I curse you away from that deception. Receive the giving grace. Receive the giving grace. Receive the giving grace. And I pray, whatever is holding your finance and that of your family, I command you to release it now. In the name of Jesus. If you've never made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ, please keep standing. I know we are late. Just give me two minutes and we're out of here. You've never made, please bring the announcement. You've never made a decision for Jesus. Everybody keep standing, please. No moving up and down, please. Inside and outside. This is a very important announcement now. You've never made a decision for Jesus Christ. Please look at me. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There are some of you who have made a decision for Jesus, but you have found yourself derailing. you backslidden, and you need to return to the Lord. As I count, I will just count one to four because of time. I know there are people outside, there are people inside. We want to welcome you. Don't be ashamed. Run to Jesus Christ right now. The Lord bless you as you come. One. Please leave your seat and come. Quickly, quickly. Two. 
Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed, please. Inside and outside. Hallelujah. Run to Jesus Christ. It's time to make everything new. He died for your sins. Three. Please, quickly, quickly. Don't just stroll around. Run. Run as though they are calling you to give you a gift. Run as though they are calling you to give you a gift. Because it's a gift. The free gift. Hallelujah. Finally, four. Hallelujah. You can still join us. God bless you. Thank you. Lift your hands, those of you here. Thank you for coming. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe you died for me. Today, I make Jesus Lord of my life. Hallelujah. From today, I denounce sin and Satan. I declare that I'm a child of God. I'm born again in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, live my life. The power of sin over my life is broken. I'm a child of God. Let her go. You are hearing her confession and you are still remaining. Let her go. I'm born again in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for making this decision. We love you. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. I'd like you to follow the ushers. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.